This past Memorial Day, I had a lunch uh, with my family, and we were eating at a, a Korean restaurant called Dongbang Grill. And uh, my mom saw an old friend out of the corner of her eye and said, oh, he's very good friends with your father. You should go say hello to him. So I was like, okay. So I got up and my son was sitting on next to me and leaning on me. So he came with me and my mom followed us and we said hello to uh, this man and he was with his wife and uh, looked like his children and his children's spouses. They were having lunch. And when my son greeted him, uh, he said, wait, wait. And he pulled out his wallet and he takes out this crisp uh, bill <laughs> and he gives it to my son and we were all laughing and everyone was like you know it was a little bit awkward but we were all laughing at, at that situation and then we get back to my table and I put away the bill of course I gave it put it back into his piggy bank at home and I thought it was a 20 but when I looked at the bill it was a 50 and I was like oh my goodness this guy just gave us a $50 bill and then when him and his family left, we greeted them on their way out. And it, it made me think, it was a funny incident, and it made me think, will people treat my children well because of me? And secondly, will people treat my grandchildren well because of me? Second Kings chapter 8 verses 16 through 29 In the fifth year of Joram son of Ahab king of Israel when Jehoshaphat was king of Judah Jehoram son of Jehoshaphat began his reign as king of Judah He was 32 years old when he became king and he reigned in Jerusalem 8 years he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel, as the house of Ahab had done. For he married a daughter of Ahab, he did evil in the eyes of the Lord. Nevertheless, for the sake of his servant David, the Lord was not willing to destroy Judah. He had promised to maintain a lamp for David and his descendants forever. In the time of Jehoram, Edom rebelled against Judah and set up its own king. So Jehoram went to Zaire with all his chariots. The Edomites surrounded him and his chariot commanders, but he rose up and broke through by night. His army, however, fled back home. To this day, Edom has been in rebellion against Judah. Libna revolted at the same time. As for the other events of Jehoram's reign and all he did, are they not written in the book of the annals of the kings of Judah? Jehoram rested with his fathers and was buried with them in the city of David. And Ahaziah, his son, succeeded him as king. In the twelfth year of Joram, son of Ahab, king of Israel, Ahaziah, son of Jehoram, king of Judah, began to reign. Ahaziah was twenty-two years old when he became king, and he reigned in Jerusalem one year. His mother's name was Athaliah, a granddaughter of Amri, king of Israel. He walked in the ways of the house of Ahab, and did evil in the eyes of the Lord, as the house of Ahab had done, for he was related by marriage to Ahab's family. Ahaziah went with Joram, son of Ahab, to war against Hazael, king of Aram, at Ramoth-Gilead. The Arameans wounded Joram, so King Joram returned to Jezreel to recover from the wounds the Arameans had inflicted on him at Ramoth in his battle with Hazael, king of Aram. Then Ahaziah, son of Jehoram, king of Judah, went down to Jezreel to see Joram, son of Ahab, because he had been wounded. Uh, I want to look at verse 18. He followed the ways of the kings of Israel at, as the house of Ahab had done, for he married a daughter of Ahab. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, 
Nevertheless, for the sake of his servant David, the Lord was not willing to destroy Judah. He had promised to maintain a lamp for David and his descendants forever. Uh, let me take a moment to read uh, from the Living Life devotional from page 110. It gives a very good explanation of what's going on. This passage highlights the failures of Jehoram, king of Judah. His failures are particularly significant because he is the son of Jehoshaphat, a king who walked in the ways of the Lord. He could have followed in the footsteps of his father and lead Judah back to godliness, but unfortunately he goes the other way and pursues false gods. Jehoram does much evil in the eyes of the Lord, but God withholds his wrath and shows much grace toward him. Although Judah deserves judgment, God spares them for the sake of one man, David. In the same way, though we do what is evil and deserves judgment, God spares us because of one man, Jesus Christ, the greater David. Have you ever thought about the legacy that you are going to leave for your descendants? How can you set a good example for the younger generation? You know, um, it's somewhat of a controversial subject theologically when the Bible talks about curses going down to the third and fourth generation and blessings going down and being passed down through the generations. Um, I don't have the complete answer, but it's fascinating to think of if we have offspring, what is the legacy that we will leave behind for them, for our children and our children's children and our children's children's children and children and so on. Uh, I remember growing up in the Korean immigrant church, the one question that every adult would ask me as a child was, who is your father? <laughs> and they still do that in our communities. And it's a little sad, but people treat even the children according to who their parents are. Um, I remember the, the Bertie Madoff scandal where he cheated people out of millions and millions of dollars. And sadly, on the two-year anniversary after he was arrested, his first son, Mark, hanged himself uh, in his apartment in Soho, New York City, because he couldn't live with the family shame. And then after that, the second son, Andrew, uh, his cancer relapsed. And Andrew said publicly, my cancer relapsed because of the stress and the shame that my father has brought upon me. And he died of his cancer. And it's, it's weird to see how the sins of the father, you cannot deny the sins of the father affect the sons. And the blessings of the father uh, affect the sons as well. Uh, my major in college was history and this past year I discovered the Smithsonian Channel and that channel is amazing. It's like what the History Channel should have been. And uh, I, I got really hooked on these World, World War II documentaries with that old, grainy, black and white video footage. Sometimes they, they computer enhance it to make it color. And I'm fascinated uh, watching these World War II documentaries and the evil of uh, Hitler and the Nazi regime uh, not too long ago in our history. And I stumbled upon one documentary. It wasn't so much historical. It was more present day. And it was called uh, Hitler's Children. And it looked at the children of the the, the highest officers in the Nazi party, their children and their descendants, and what kind of lives they went on to live with the shame of the sins of their fathers passed on to them. They found one uh, woman, Bettina Goering, a uh, descendant of Hermann Goering, the uh, second in command next to Hitler. And she said, I had myself sterilized so that I would not pass on the blood of a monster. She physically had surgeries 
ensuring that she could not have any children, she said so that she would not pass on the blood of a monster. And she knew that she physically resembled Hermann Goering. So she left Germany and she moved to a remote uh, rural area of New Mexico, living in seclusion, obviously not having children. And she shared her struggle of how she rejected everything about her life, her past, her family, even about being German. And then later in life she missed uh, Germany. And so she would host these parties and invite her German friends where they would cook old German food and sing German songs. And yet, it was amazing, she continued to live with the shame of her ancestors. How the sins of the father got passed down to generation to generation to generation. If we have children and they have children and they have children, we could leave behind a debt or a blessing or credit in terms of finances, in terms of reputation and leaving behind a good name or a bad name. But even more important than that is the spiritual legacy that we will leave behind for our children and our children's children. Uh, we are all blessed and fortunate to come from families that raised us and cared for us and left behind for us um, traditions and legacy and uh, given us so much and we continue this circle of life and we are blessed if we get to raise our own kids and see them have their own children and their own children and we really need to consider what spiritual legacy will we leave behind for our descendants. Uh, please pray with me. God, help us to be more responsible, more diligent, more disciplined in how we live our lives, the things we say, the things we do, the things we accomplish or fail to accomplish. And let us leave behind a great spiritual blessing for those who go come after us. We ask in Jesus' name, Amen.